So now we have uh, the body and the head. We've got some tight fitting clothing, but there are a lot of layers of clothing and other accessories that we want to create for this guy. And we could do it here in ZBrush, but Maya is also a great place to create these sort of hard surface kind of pieces. So ZBrush works really well with Maya. All we have to do is be able to export out this model or a version of it so that we know what to build the pieces on top of, and then we'll bring those back into ZBrush. So we need to get this model out of ZBrush into a state where we can bring it into Maya. And we don't really care about the topology or really anything about this. We just need the basic shape without destroying what we have here, because we're going to come back to this. What we can do is come down under Subtool in the tool palette, come down to Merge, and I'm going to do a Merge Visible. And what this is going to do is it's going to take all the subtools, merge them into one subtool and, and sort of save that off. And so it's not going to touch this specific tool. So I'm going to hit Merge Visible. And if we come up here, you'll see if we click on our main tool that we can switch to this merged creature here, it might be called merged extract. And you can see it doesn't have a number by it. This one has an 11. That's the number of subtools. And so we can actually click to switch over and you can see that that's now one mesh. So right now this mesh has about, it's like 5 million. If you look down under the name there, about 5 million polygons. So what I'm going to do is decimate this so that we retain the shape of it, but we get something that's much lower in poly count so that we can work with it much easier. So to do that, we're going to go to Z plugin. We are going to go to decimation master. I'm going to turn on freeze borders and then I'm going to pre-process. So we have to make sure to pre-process anything that we're going to decimate. This is where all the heavy calculations happen in this process. So we'll just say pre-process current because we only have one subtool. And so you see up here, it'll give you some progress of, of how it's going. It's basically going to go through and cash out all of the geometry so that we can then choose a percentage that we want to decimate. So the idea is we're going to be triangulating this mesh and then reducing the poly count without sacrificing the visual fidelity of what we've created. That's the idea. You're able to get out high res meshes, but they're much lower poly than they would otherwise be if you're working with a, a highly subdivided mesh, let's say, or a DynaMesh. So we'll go ahead and let this finish up real quickly. All right, so it says operation completed. Now we're able to go in and decimate it. An alternative method would be to DynaMesh this whole thing together. That would eliminate a lot of the interior geometry and then decimate that. That would be even, even better probably. So well, we're gonna go ahead and just decimate this real quickly. So here you can see the percentage of decimation. So by default, it's set to 20%. We can say decimate current. And this actually happens pretty quickly because it's reading from that cache file. So it's triangulated things. Now we're down to about 2 million, looks like. And you can see we haven't lost really any visual fidelity. In this case, it doesn't actually matter that much because we're just concerned with the position where the head is, where the shoulders are, so we can build the pieces around it. We don't really care as much. And so we can come in here, we can change this to 10%. Now keep in mind, when you change this percentage, it's an actual percentage of the original. So if we did 20% at the beginning, Doing 10% now is not 10% of that 20% of the new total. It's 10% of the original. So you're actually just moving up and down on that scale from zero to a hundred. And so we hit 10% and decimate that again, happens pretty quickly. Now we're down to about a million or so. I'm going to even take it down further because again, we don't really care too much about the uh, visual fidelity at this point. Go ahead and decimate that. Again, happens really quickly. Now we're down to 500,000 and we can work with that. Okay, you can go even lower if you wanted to. By changing the percentage, you'll also get kind of an indication of the number of polygons that you'll tend to get in the number of points. Keep in mind that when you're working with quads and then you go to triangles, the numbers may not match exactly and you're not gonna get an exact match, but you can also do targets in here. So if you wanna get close to a certain poly count, you can do that as well. See how? At that point, you're taking it down so far that you're getting, losing a lot of the fidelity. Okay. So we'll go ahead and export this. To do that, I am going to actually go down to the export rollout. I'm going to turn off groups, subgroups here. And it doesn't really matter since it's already triangles, but you can see we can switch from quads to triangles. And we can go to export. Now, 
There is also another way to do this. If you have GoZ set up, GoZ is a, a way to, with a couple of button presses, send things back and forth between ZBrush and Maya, but we're just gonna export a straight OBJ and import it into Maya. So let's do that. We'll go to export, and I'm just gonna export it into our ZBrush files, and we'll call this something like Creature Template. Go ahead and save that out, and that's gonna export that out. Now, right now, you know, if you wanna go back to your main project and do some more work, right now we're on this particular tool. All we have to do is click on this and switch back over to our original tool, and now we've got all of our subtools back. We haven't decimated anything, and we're still ready to go. So now at this point, we can open up Maya. So with Maya open, to bring in our mesh, all we have to do is go to File, and we're gonna do Import, and we'll navigate to where our file is. It's a creature template, OBJ, and we'll go ahead and import that. And we're not gonna to worry too much about the scale right now. Once we get our final model into Maya with the film geometry and the game res geometry in the subsequent courses, we'll worry about the scale a little bit more. Right now, just gonna bring this in and work with it as is. Okay, you can see that black area there. That's just geometry that's poking through. So you can see that's gonna be the arm. And so I'm just turn on our two-sided lighting and that'll be fine. So we're just using this as sort of a template. So now I'm gonna save this file and this is where we're gonna start in the next lesson where we're gonna go in and start to build. Uh, I'm gonna make like an ornate wooden carved collar that kind of comes around with some upholstery on it. Uh, we're gonna have a belt, things like that. So we're gonna do that starting in the next clip.